scriptures are thousands of years old, so um, they might have become elaborated or altered. That's your question. Yeah, it's a very common question, and many devotees they like to answer that scriptures are not changed, and there's a parampara system which doesn't allow them to change. This answer is not a holistic answer. I, 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 personally, I, I don't like to answer like this. In my view, scriptures have changed. It's not that they have not changed because I have personally seen many Puranas, many editions where there are some verses deleted, some verses added. I mean to say it's common sense. If you, uh, any, any printing press person, he can simply change things. He can simply delete the whole chapter. Who's going to stop him? There's no legal laws regarding scriptures. It's a legal law regarding constitution. <laughs> but anybody can do anything. And even Madhvachare, he writes in Rig Veda commentary at a point uh, that that this sent particular sentence in Rig Veda, it's uh, I mean to say he he said that there's a, there's a there's a sentence missing here. He comments that <laughs> it's not there, and then he he mentions what the sentence should be. So down the line, it was deleted somewhere. It was not there. So uh, then you might ask, what's authenticity? In thousand years, so much of us of that scripture might have been altered, and we should, we would have got something else. And um, there is a tradition of Shankara tradition who are of this opinion that Vedas cannot be altered, which is a part of scripture, and Puranas is another part of scripture. They have been altered because the Sanskrit is loose, a uh, loose, uh, not loose, loose is not good, but the Sanskrit is quite easy. But Vedic Sanskrit is very difficult and compact, so they cannot be altered and Puranic Sanskrit can be altered. Uh, to a certain extent that's true, but my point is that Madhvacharya says even in Rig Veda there is a statement missing. And he says, he also comments, the month, some statements have been altered, so there can be alteration, they can be, So, but then what to do? That's a question. Should we throw these scriptures out? Now, first point is that uh, some statements have been altered, but that doesn't mean the message is altered. If you, so if you take a history book, and if you change some statements here and there, but the message of that book that we are, we are telling you history, that's not altered, it's there. And we can make some sense out of, the, out of that, am I right? So, the message is intact. Verses might be added, deleted, that can be done. But at the same time, now you can say, well, if some important verses are missing, then the message is <laughs> finished and it's altered. So to actually uh, stop that alteration and, uh, and that uh, all these uh, things, uh, deletion and additions, to stop that, there's a system of writing commentaries and and there the roles of and there the role of parampara comes tradition a spiritual tradition there is always a spiritual tradition in every country isn't it and people 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 come in that tradition and then they write commentaries on those those books their own books now why to write commentaries first of all you need explanation of that text according to that circumstance you know how people are going to follow it the the, the scriptures should be tailored according to that time, place, circumstance. So, so various acharyas come, powerful personalities, they write commentaries and they say, okay, this should be followed like this, like this, it should be applied, application, how it should be done in, the, in that particular time. One, uh, one, one uh, um, purpose of those commentaries is this. Another purpose of that commentary in that tradition is to actually uh, stop this alteration. Because what happens is, anybody who has read these commentaries, you, you see, first of all, these commentaries are written in a very large space of time. Just like, for example, if you take Bhagavad Gita, there's a commentary of Sridhar Swami. Sridhar Swami <coughs> came hundreds of years back and he wrote a commentary. Then there's a commentary by Shankaracharya, he came around 1100 years back. And then there's a, uh, and there's a commentary in, uh, so in 9th century, I think. 9, 9th century, how much it is? 1100 years? And then there is Madhvacharya commentary, Ramanacharya, they were like, 700 years back, 800 years back, 300 years back. So you see all this time 
and what they do in commentary is they comment on each word so then so then nobody can alter you know the words if they try to alter it but in commentary you will find find that words and the words and again it can be corrected so the writing commentaries is not does not only help to understand the meaning and the application of that words in particular time place circumstance but it and, and not only it actually increases the glory of that scripture because if so many great people are writing commentary on that book like gita there are so many commentaries so gita automatically becomes popular and very important it also helps in preservation of that text because i've seen in many uh, some some schools not some but one of the school modern spiritual school they say some chapters are added in bhagavad gita they don't then they said oh, 12 chapter is added 15 chapter is added so they publish gita without these chapters by the way <laughs> i've seen that book those kind of books but well then what do you do so but then so okay you read commentaries of previous people shankara ramanuja they have commented on these shlokas and they have said this chapter exists so that means uh, over the time over the time of 1000 2000 years people were having this chapter and they were commenting so this means a person who is publishing the book without this chapter he is a foolish person he is he is a cheater that's all that's all so that's how we understand that scriptures are although they are altered but there's a system to control that alteration and then bring it back to original form and that had been done over the centuries and that is why it is very important to come in a spiritual school and spiritual tradition which is called parampara and then you can understand the text and the message of that text that's how it goes hari krishna